Recently, BBC reported on a very interesting historical discovery. A Roman coin, previously believed to be 18th century forgery, was shown to actually be from antiquity. The most interesting thing about this coin is that it bears the name of Empress Pansianus. This led BBC to title their video Gold coin proves fake Roman emperor was real. So should we now add Sponsian to the list of Roman emperors alongside the likes of Augustus and Constantine? Let's look into the details and find out what's up with those coins and with this Sponsian guy. The coin in question is one of the batch that was found in 1713 in Transylvania, back then a part of the Habsburg Empire. The coin in the study isn't actually the only one with the name of Sponsian. There are at least four gold coins with this name. Different catalogues attest the existence of two additional gold coins and a silver one. But their whereabouts are unknown, so we can't be sure that they exist. Two of the Sponsian coins are in the Imperial Collection in Vienna. One is in the Brukenthal National Museum in the Romanian city of Sibiu. And the last coin is the one from the BBC report and is being studied in the University of Glasgow. We assume that all of the Sponsian coins are a part of the same find, but we don't know it for sure. That batch from Transylvania also included coins with the names of Emperor Philip and Gordian, and a couple of other coins. The coins in the batch are very peculiar. First of all, while all the genuine imperial coins are stamped, these ones appear to have been cast from molds. They are all supposed to be of the same value, but have highly varying weights. The designs are the strangest part. The legend on the obverse says Imp Sponsiani, which means of the Imperator Sponsian. It doesn't say Kaiser Augustus, like any other coin featuring an emperor would. The reverse of the Sponsian coin copies a republican design from the 170s BC. Funnily, it does have letters K Aug, but in the original republican design, those letters meant Gaius Augurinus which was the name of the Monier. So, all in all, these coins are very strangely made. They don't meet the standards of a Roman imperial mint. The prevalent opinion of the historians at the time of the find was that these coins were so-called barbarous imitations, coins made outside of the empire to look like the imperial currency. However, in 1868, a coin expert Henry Cohen declared that these coins were modern fakes and by modern he meant 18th century fakes. His main argument was that these coins were cast from mold and not stamped like all of the other barbarous imitations. Casting was a popular manufacturing process for counterfeit production in the 18th century. Cohen and the later supporters of his theory concluded that these coins are a part of a 2000 IQ galaxy brain scheme in which they were deliberately made to appear barbarous and strange to attract the interest of the collectors. Cohen's theory had some holes, like how would a fraudster come up with a fake Roman name that would later prove to be not fake. The name Sponsianus first appears on these coins found in 1713 and was later found on an inscription excavated in 1720s for some individual called Nicodemus Sponsianus. Despite that, Cohen's theory was more or less a consensus until now. One thing to understand here is that there are actually multiple questions about these Sponsian coins. Are these coins from antiquity, or are they later forgeries? Were they made in the empire or by outsiders? Did the Sponsian guy actually exist? And if he did, then who was he? The researchers from Glasgow have really answered only the first question. They analyzed patterns of wear and tear and the deposits of earth particles in the coins, and came to a conclusion that these coins have been in circulation during antiquity and were originally made many hundreds of years before the finding. This disproves coins theory, but still doesn't rule out the original hypothesis about barbarous imitations. We also can't say anything for certain about that Sponsian guy and whether or not he existed at all. So BBC is actually clickbaiting you with that title. But there are findings in the paper that give us more information to speculate about the historical Sponsian. The purity analysis shows two things. Firstly, the coins have a high admixture of copper and silver, suggesting that they were made from imperfectly refined ore. Secondly, Sponsian coin and the coins of Gordian and Philip have different levels of admixture, which means that they weren't made in one batch. The level of silver and copper in the metal and the range of variation 
is very similar to that measured in the 1st century Dacian era gold objects made in the same area, which suggests that they were actually made near the place where they were found. This finding goes against the barbarous imitation theory and supports the notion that Sponsian was a real military commander stationed in Dacia. Most of the proponents of historical Sponsian say that he was a Dacian usurper in the 240s. This coincides with the reigns of Gordian and Philip, who are depicted on the coins from the same find. This theory is plausible, but we have decent documentation of the events in Dacia during that period, and none of them mention any local usurpations. We also know that there was a mint in Dacia that functioned until the 250s, so why would you cast poorly made coins when you could have stamped decent ones in the mint? The 260s are a better fit for a Sponsian regime. Firstly, we know for sure that Emperor Gallienus took at least two legions from Dacia, and a lot of historians even write that the province was lost during his reign. And secondly, the imperial mint already stopped functioning, but there was still an artisan jewelry industry at the provincial capital of Apollum. They worked in gold, using clay molds, and were perfectly capable of producing those poorly made coins. The researchers from Glasgow proposed the following scenario. In the 260s, when multiple usurpations and rebellions spring out everywhere around the empire, Dacia becomes isolated from the capital and stops receiving imperial currency. But some officers and soldiers are still stationed there and need to be paid. There are no mints in the province, but there is a lot of gold from the mines and a couple of local goldsmiths. So the provincial commander called Sponsian commissions them to make some coins from that ore, so he can pay his officers. Those coins are first made in the name of previous emperors, who actually paid attention to the province, and then in the name of Sponsian himself. Sponsian assumed the imperium over the province, but he is never actually acclaimed as Augustus, so the only title he has on the coins is Imperator. Local goldsmiths aren't coin designers, so they find some old coin and copy its design for the reverse. In 272 AD, Aurelian evacuates the province and recalls all of the precious metal in circulation, so these coins never turn up elsewhere. But some local rich person hides his stash and for whatever reason is unable to retrieve it. It is unearthed in the 18th century and thus a historical mystery is created. This version would actually make Sponsian to be one of the so-called 30 tyrants of Galenus from the notoriously fake chronicle called Historia Augusta. This scenario can be plausible, although some stuff, like the Republican design, still sounds like a stretch. But ultimately, it doesn't have more evidence for it than some Dacian rich guy called Sponsian, minting a bunch of coins in his name as a prank. So that's all we can say right now about the so-called Roman Emperor Sponsian. Admittedly, it's not as exciting as the BBC headline, but few things in life are. Tell me in the comments if you think that Sponsian is a real person. I'll leave the link to the research paper in the description for those of you who want a more detailed analysis. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.